Oh, he's like, you're not gonna die quick. <laughs> I love you guys. Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha, aka Geek Chic, and we are back with another reaction to Ninja Kamui. We are now on to episode seven. So the last episode, we got a little background on the insider help that our guy Higan was getting from inside of Azu uh, Alza City, pardon me. And it turns out that it was none other than Emma. Emma, who was posing as an FBI agent as well. She said that she had her vested interest in why she wanted to help Higan, but also that she wants to take down Alza and these ninjas, but she knows that it's not something she could do on her own. So she was basically infiltrating the FBI in order to get close to Higan because she couldn't really find a way to approach him otherwise. And we also found out that Higan's wife, Mari, and her were actually friends. They'd met years ago when Mari had saved her life. And this is the other reason why Emma was had a vested interest in protecting Higan. And she explains that she was there on the night that he was attacked. She tried her best to get there in time to save Mari and his son, but just wasn't just wasn't meant to be. But she did manage to save Higan's life by cutting, what she say? She did something about the technology she used. It basically allowed Higan not to bleed out from that wound, but it made it look like he would so that the ninjas would leave him alone. But anyways, she said, look, I've created this suit for you because going forward, you're not gonna be able to compete on that regular ninja stuff. The ninjas you're going up against now are all teched out thanks to Alza. So you need to level yourself up because yeah, as good as you are as a ninja, you're, you know, the game has changed. So she created this suit, this Kamui suit as she called it. And it was specifically made for Higan to help enhance whatever it is that he's already thinking and doing as far as a ninja. I don't know if it has anything to do with his, his jutsus. I feel like that's still gonna be even unique to him, but from the sounds of things, it might even help to enhance those. So either way, she created the suit, but she said the only way it works is that it has to be linked into his mind so that he can literally read his thoughts as he has them and respond. So she's like, I gotta put you under, mess you with this suit, and then you'll be good. But in the middle of that procedure, she gets attacked by none other than the pervert. And the pervert is pretty hot, like he's good. He, he knows how to fight with his robots. Clearly she did not do a lot of battle botting with her robots. <laughs> anyway, she basically keeps him busy long enough so that the merging process between Higan and this uh, suit can happen. He's now one with the suit and we ended the episode with him finally being with the suit. So it looks like we're gonna face off with the pervert and I really hope that my guy wins. And I'm yeah, I'm just really excited to see what the suit can do because she even incorporated his badass mask. So yeah, I am hyped for this episode, ready to jump in, about to do that. Just before I do though, a reminder that if you'd like to be notified when I do uploads of this show or anything else you might be watching of mine, you can go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. And please do show some love to the video if you're feeling it. I appreciate it lots. All right, that out of the way, let's get into the episode right now. This suit is so bad. This suit's so badass. Can you stop talking? I want this man to really stop giving speeches. Sorry, what? She's still alive! Okay, I thought they took her out. I'm glad, because like there's so much about this suit that he needs to know. What was that? Keep talking, smart mouth. No. Because here's the thing, bro. You don't fight like a ninja. Ooh, the ninja run, I love it. Woo, okay. Yeah, this, this suit is everything. Yeah. Oh! Not supersonic speed. Oh, y'all, yeah, mm-hmm. Oh, he's like, this is good. He liking it now. Oh, that glow came from the inside. Right in the mouth, please. Shut him up. Oh, no. Where's your shell? Nothing to say? Ew. I was joking. Don't say anything. Yeah, it is. Stop talking. Not the piano music. We don't care about this pervert. The world is better off. Interesting. Most people just have a cyanide pill. This guy literally had an explosive. Oh, he's like, you're not going to die quick. Ah! I love it. Oh, you have a nerve pot kettle. You getting off on actually hurting people? Anyway, but yes, I want him to be crying by the end because he's a weirdo. You need to cut off his tongue first though. Because if you want to hurt a man like him, the best way to do it is to make sure he can't continue to speak. 
こちらへの見せしめかと。No n o s e Oh, which plan? What's the great cause? So, they're the cause of ninja. How would you even know? Anyway, that guy's definitely got something up his sleeve, and I don't think that even Yamaji is aware of it. That part makes sense. What is up with this guy? Okay, keep that head down. Did you stop him before? Sure, you will. Uh, you think he's thinking about that? His wife died like an hour ago.、Mm, exactly, he cares about that. His wife. Alright, flashback. Mm. Nice. Well, you know, when you, you got it, you got it. The peak of what? Take out Yamaji. Okay, that's not possible. No one can cast aside emotion. They're not your good parents, then. They're terrible. They weren't your real parents. Ow! What? Yep, Mari doesn't care about that. When someone truly cares about you, your face is just a part of your body, and you're always beautiful to them. Does she look like she's lying? Hmm. It's because she believed it. Mari seems like she was a cool person. <sighs> Listen, honey, humans, we can't turn off emotions. It don't work. No, ninjas are what get ninjas killed, apparently. So she. So Mari really did save his life. Damn. Damn, she saw it coming. Who were those guys? That didn't look like the Alza guy. So he's training the military. Interesting. Yeah, I am interested in what his plans are. Huh? Yeah, good answer. Oh, so it's about self preservation. Isn't everything in the end? Interesting. I'd say so. Yep, I got busy. Wow, watch it. There's a cliff. <laughs> you guys weren't taught about the basics in ninja school? Guess not. There would have been a reason. You already are, technically. If you can handle all the stuff the ninja does, you can handle being a parent. Although being a parent is harder. <laughs> of? So we saw this, this back in episode two or three? Nice. I feel like none of you guys left this room. You have to know he was prepared. Damn. His Darth Vader secret art is nuts. Well, I appreciate the sentiment. You are not. Oh, wow. Not him turning himself into a god. Yeah, you need to take Yamaji down immediately. Yeah, I was about to say, you saw that, dark, that, in, that art. Okay, so that's how we have some exiles out there outside of these two. 
私が独自に開発を続けてきたものですある人の助けになればとうどうか皆の仲間のためにこれをやや子大事にな How did he know? I mean, should be asked, he's a ninja. Never mind. He probably heard the heartbeat or something.、Mm. Oh, that's where they were burning. Okay. Right? Mari is very smart. Yeah, you've never been a mother, because then you know that's not that easy. Mm hmm. Oh, well. Ooh, this scene. Very well done. Yep. That's what a mother does. Yeah, that's just not at all true. Exactly. Look how he goes fighting. See that tear? That's emotion. Very interesting philosophy that they're trying to instill, though. Okay. Okay. <laughs> exactly, didn't I say? It's actually harder. Being a ninja is hard, but. Exactly. Isn't the whole point to protect something? She protected what she loved. Okay. Uh huh. Which is. World domination. Of course, you end the episode. <laughs> Alright, another really good episode. We finally have the backstory on how Mari and Emma know each other because I was curious. She said she saved her life, but I'm like, I mean, it sounds like Mari based on the flashbacks we've seen. She was not one to like to take life, especially of younger people. But、uh, we see that it was actually because they were. In the organization together, and it looks like Mari was in charge of training her. So, yeah, it explains how they built such a strong bond, and that Mari was the one who taught her her secret technique of the making things appear dead. So, like I said in the episode, Mari's saving her husband from the afterlife. <laughs> she didn't even realize, but she did tell her that there would come a day when she would actually need to use it, and that's exactly what happened. So, yeah, it's good to get that background. We see now why Mari was someone that was. Someone to be loved, someone to be admired. And it kind of makes me think that when Mari said in the episode that both Higan and, and Sai meant so much to her, I'm thinking that maybe some of the reasons Sai is like, again, we still don't know what's going on with Sai. I still need to know why his eyes be just completely blown out all the time. But I'm wondering if some of why he's like this is because of Mari. Like maybe he was in love with Mari too. I feel like there might have been a little bit of that. But I think he had a lot of love for her either way. So maybe he blames Higan. For Mari ending up in this situation, right? Because they crossed into that territory of being a couple. And I talked about this a couple episodes ago about how Sai might have started to develop a bit of jealousy when those two formed a closer bond together than, you know, you know how it goes. Third wheel and sucks, right? No one wants to be the third wheel, especially if they grew up together and they were always kind of on equal footing. You know, when Mari and Higan got into that relationship, that would have changed the dynamic of their trio ir irrevocably forever, especially when a kid was involved. So I think maybe Zai felt a little. Abandoned, maybe a little left behind, maybe betrayed. And then, of course, with everything leading up to Mari's death, he might be feeling extra spicy where h e g o n s concerned. But anyway, but it's interesting to get that background and hearing more about like how the organization was versus what Yamaji is trying to turn it into, which again, we still don't have the plan, but it's got to be world domination, right? Because <laughs> The, with what Auza has been doing with taking out all these different、um, countries' leaders that try to stop them from infiltrating, I gotta think that he wants to have people everywhere. And we heard Yamaji say that if Japan goes, if we're dedicated to protect Japan solely and Japan goes down, what happens to us? And it's kind of like, that's quite the thought. But yeah, I guess his idea, he,、uh, he gone. Yamaji, I think, has a, again, he definitely has a god complex. But he's got this idea that he needs to be extended beyond Japan. Like he wants to have an impact outside of what's in comparison to the rest of the world, a rather small country. 
And so it, to me, that's what I'm thinking is that he's got some real fears of his mortality. I mean, he's still human, but I think in his mind, he thinks this is the way to guarantee the survival of what he thinks ninja culture should be into the future. And that's why he joined with such a futuristic leader in Auza. And now I think he's just trying to, as I said, just take over and implement his own personal army in all these different places to ensure that there's no way to ever wipe him or his organization out. But of course, that's not going to work in the long term, because I do think that the Alza leader, I, I still don't know his name, but anyway, the blonde, I don't think he's got his own plans, clearly. The way he acts his whole fake, <laughs> I'm so excited about everything, blah, 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 blah. That's BS. He definitely has his own agenda. We just don't know what it is yet. I think he's, they're both using each other. Clearly, Yamaji is using that guy. That guy's using Yamaji. And I think Yamaji also has every intention of trying to take that blondie out when he gets what he gets when he gets what he needs. Cause obviously the blondie, I think the advantage he's got that's keeping him alive right now is that he has the technical know-how and understanding that Yamaji just doesn't have and wouldn't have time to learn. So we'll see what happens. Eventually there's gonna be some infighting, but for now they have a common goal. So we'll have to see what that is. Hopefully next episode we'll actually get to hear what the plan is. But yeah, it was good to see that backstory see how the ninjas operate, this whole idea of, you know, you have to abandon your emotions to be a good ninja. I always laugh when I hear lines like that because it's literally impossible as a human unless you're actually a sociopath. You can't turn your feelings off. It doesn't work. But it's not the way we work. We're all emotionally driven. And I like that Mari did that line in there where she said that emotions are not what make me weak. They make me stronger. And it's true. Look at Higan. Higan would not be the absolute demon that he is right now if he wasn't being driven by his love for his wife and his son, right? That's really what's driving it right now. So she had a point, she was onto something. And it's also good to know that now that Emma has definitely got stakes in this, like she, because of how much she loved Mari as like a sister, family member, whatever you wanna call it, she's very emotionally invested in this mission too. So I'm glad that Higan now has an ally that really, really does care about this as much as he does. Cause that was my fears that is Emma, if Emma's just doing this as a one-off, thank you to Mari, this may not work out, but she has enough skin in the game to want to actually help him for real. So I'm glad because that suit is amazing. Oh my gosh, that fight was so good. The way that like said, uh, what's his name? The leader of Auza was like, he adapted to that suit in no time. Like apparently it takes time for other people. We don't know because you've never seen anyone else adapt to the suit. But yeah, my man, I said it last episode. We saw him, what was it? link in or sync up with the machine from like, he was like at 13%, he went to like 100% in a second when he figured out what was going on. So yeah, him and this suit are gonna definitely be a problem and I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> I feel like we just got a taste of it in this episode. So the fights, the battle bot era is beginning and I'm very much looking forward to it. So yeah, another solid episode. I'm liking this show a lot. Very much looking forward to the next episode and I hope you guys enjoyed watching with me. If you did, please show some love and I'll see you in the next one.